the Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and we are on the road yet again. This time, just leaving Walmart, actually, because I got on the road, started to film a video, and realized that I left my micro SD card for my DJI Osmo Pocket at home when I was transferring some videos off of it. So we are back on the road now, and we're heading out to a customer where I'm actually doing a full uh, rip and reinstall of their network and their phones. Now this is a customer that is uh, in the real estate industry. They have five offices dotted up and down the coast of Oregon. And I am going to their office in Depot Bay. And this uh, customer has really junky internet at a number of these offices. So each office is a little bit different. They all have like different internet connections. The one that I'm going to now has wave broadband. So the, the internet itself is actually pretty good, but they are being charged a crazy amount of money for their phones. And so we are going to be putting in a solid network for them with solid wireless, as well as a PoE switch. And then we're going to uh, hook up the phones, but I don't know how far I will get into the phones. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to complete the job today because I suspect that their wave broadband connection might be double natted. And if that's the case, then uh, I'm going to have to call wave and I don't think I have time to get into all of that today. But I will do everything that I can to prepare for the next time that I have to come out uh, if that's the case. So the network that I'm going with is very, very simple. For all five of these offices, I'm doing the same thing. The core router is going to be an Edge Router X. Again, these are offices where there's maybe three or four people maximum, and they're real estate agents, so they're typically not in the office at all anyways. Inside the office, there's usually maybe one or two people uh, at any given time. Uh, and Edge Router X is going to be plenty powerful. It connects out to UNMS. I can do quality of service for the SIP trunking, uh, and or for the phones, I mean, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. Inside each network, uh, I have a UAP AC Pro access point with a guest network as well as a secure wireless SSID. And, uh, and that's it. Two of the offices are getting uh, US 8 150 watt PoE switches. So it's a very, very simple install overall. I'm not even doing VPN between the offices. They didn't need that. So uh, yeah, it'll be easy to set up and uh, hopefully I don't run into too many issues. All right, so let's get up to Depot Bay and get this thing started. All right, here's what I'm looking at. We got some old equipment here. Uh, this is an old Samsung phone system that is not in use. I'm gonna get rid of this Samsung phone system. Uh, here we have where their internet comes in, the wave broadband that goes up into this uh, TP-Link, you know, router Wi-Fi combo unit thing, which again, I suspect that that's double natted because I'm sure that uh, I'm not sure that the WAN IP address of the internet lives on the TP link. Uh, that also goes over here to this like Arlo device. I'm not sure what this thing is. Arlo, Arlo something or other. I'm not sure what this is used for, but we'll just leave that in place just in case. And other than that, we have this uh, PoE switch right here. I believe that this is property of wave broadband. It does say wave on it. So we're gonna bypass that switch with our US8 120, uh, US8 150 watt. And then the other little switch that they have is this little net gear right here, which will work just fine for everything else. So I'm gonna make my switch, the US8 150 watt, the primary switch uh, off of the, um, the edge router. And then I will fan it out with one of the extra ports into this separate internet switch here. But the first thing I need to do is clear up some space because I don't have any place to put any of my equipment right now. I'll tell you what though, you can't uh, hope for a better view. I mean, just look at this, absolutely gorgeous. All right, starting to look a little bit cleaner. I still have to get that bracket from the Samsung off the wall. I don't know what this cable is for, this big thick one here, and I don't have anything that can cut that. If that, I mean, it feels like it's solid copper or something, and it runs into the wall, and I can't see where it goes on the other side of this wall. So I'm not sure what that is, but it was plugged into this box down here. 
So a lot of the phone system, the Samsung components were plugged into this box. This might be just a very, very old phone system, uh, or at least maybe just part of the Samsung, or maybe this was what was here before the Samsung. I'm really not sure. Uh, but this looks like maybe old stations, like you would plug your old digital phones or I don't know, some kind of analog legacy system phones into these uh, ports right here. Uh, but everything's disconnected and powered off. Uh, but since this big old thick cable goes into this box here, uh, I'm just going to kind of leave it alone. Can I get in here? Oh, I'd have to unscrew it. So that might be power for this box, even though it's not actually, it doesn't appear to actually be on. Uh, so I'm just going to cut it off. I basically cut it off right there, everything that I could. Uh, these cables here are just sitting on the floor over there. So these are, looks like they wired this place for some additional seats, but uh, they never actually implemented these because these are sort of just run along the wall uh, in the next room over and then end up in a bunch on the floor over there. So those aren't in use. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that switch there just in case we wanna use it, but it looks like the only switch ports actually being used are coming out of this uh, Wave broadband uh, equipment right here. All right, so here's uh, about halfway done. So I put the US8 150 watt on the wall right there, uh, but I did not have the uh, mounting kit for this uh, Edge Router X. I must have, uh, it must have fallen out at home or something. So I'll find that and come back uh, I still have to mount this UAPAC Pro, which I will likely mount uh, on the wall right out here. And then, it, it, good news is that this was actually in bridge mode. So I was able to put their network into the Edge Router X and it pulled a WAN IP address directly to the WAN interface of the Edge Router. So that's perfect for our voice over IP. And I've already hooked up the first IP phone here. This phone's working great, two-way audio, both inbound and outbound. And uh, the phone has quite a heck of a view too. <laughs> uh, but this phone's working great. So the next time I come back, I have to get all of the rest of the phones connected and tidy up some of the cable management and get some of the other equipment mounted on the wall. All right, day two, and we're heading back out to that same Depot Bay office. Today, we need to get the rest of the equipment mounted to the wall. We need to cable manage everything and we need to turn up the rest of those phones and then basically that office is complete from there on out I can kind of do everything remotely so that's the goal for today and uh, just got to grab a coffee and then we're on our way all right that job is done uh, total time on site was probably about four hours or so and uh, we were able to get everything accomplished that I wanted to get accomplished all the rest of the stuff you know, dialing in the phones and even connecting, or even dialing in some of the, uh, you know, Unify settings and all of that, that can now all be done remotely. So I don't have to worry about going back on site unless there's some sort of problem. As far as what I ended up doing in total, we ripped out as much of the old junk as we possibly could, including this old school AdTran switch that was powering their old phones that had a separate PoE unit. So it had this separately powered, there was a second Molex connector going into this secondary device that had a thin cable providing power to the AdTran switch, which then in turn provided PoE to all of the switch ports in that AdTran switch. And it was making a lot of noise. So like the fans were starting to go out on the thing. So I'm glad that we got it replaced. As far as the cable management, I could have done a much better job if I spent more time doing it, but of course, you know, cost is always a concern, right? If I spent an extra hour, it would look a lot nicer, but it would also cost the customer more. So I did the best I could with what uh, with the time that I had, and I was also there during business hours. So it's always kind of difficult to be wiring things around and unplugging things and plugging things back in to get around other cables and stuff like that while people are trying to work, right? You try to do as much as you can without actually disrupting uh, people's uh, workflow in their everyday life. The only thing that will now disrupt their everyday life is I did change their network subnet, meaning that I had to change their printer. They've got this big printer in the office, some Xerox something or other. And so uh, each one of those employees will have to reconnect to that printer. Uh, that's really the only disruption that was caused throughout this whole thing. I also did set up a guest network on the wireless and you know this uh, this area especially the whole coast there's uh, you know folks that sort of travel up and down the coast and uh, a lot of transients and stuff like that and so I did enable a guest network that's throttled down to 5 megabit by 2 megabit up and 
it, uh, I also set a schedule. So that guest network is open, anyone can connect to it, but it's only available between the hours of 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. That way, after hours, people aren't sort of just camping outside and uh, you know using the internet, uh, you know, the, the free internet that's being broadcast from that location. All right, that was last Friday. It is now the following Wednesday, and I am back out on the road. I'm actually setting up the second of five offices for that same client. And uh, so we're gonna get in there. We're gonna do almost the same setup. Edge Router X with a UAP AC Pro. There's no PoE switch involved in this one. It's just those two bits of equipment. So I have to get in there, switch their network over to the Edge Router X, get that access point up and running, and then install five separate phones and then switch their phone service over to their new uh, Crosstalk PBX. All right, well, I'm already running about uh, half an hour late to get to this appointment, so we're gonna go ahead and get in there and get started. All right, so here's what we're looking at in this office. We have our internet modem here. We have a separate modem from Charter for the fax line. Uh, and then we have, this is their router slash wireless, this uh, Cisco Linksys uh, EA2700. I've already pulled the internet connection out of this and hooked it up to the edge router, so that is already done. Then all they had was this other extra switch. Uh, by the way, this was uh, Velcroed to the wall with some sticky Velcro tape. <laughs> then we have this switch right here, also Velcroed to the wall. Uh, and this switch, I'm actually, I don't have a, I didn't bring a spare switch. So I'm gonna need one. This one, this has three extra connections here. And uh, so I'm gonna have to add a secondary switch. So I brought in a US8150 watt that I'm gonna put right here where the router used to be, and then I will put the edge router over here, and then I will reuse this little Cisco switch for you know non-PoE devices. Uh, all right, so that's what we are doing, and uh, so far so good. We'll hopefully clean up some of this cable management too. You can see there's a lot of old like telephone wire stuff happening down here, and I'm a little careful about what I pull out and what I don't, but uh, I will get rid of every wire that I'm sure I can get rid of safely. finished product it looks a lot better than it did it's not perfect uh, there were some spots like down here I actually ran out of my three foot extension cord so I had to use five footers down here which means I had to curl them up a little bit uh, but by and large this is a lot better than it was I had to move this whole power strip over about two inches so that I could make room for uh, the switch here and so that it had enough space in the back for the power as well as for all of the network stuff. And it's a little bit tight, but it's actually uh, it's actually not too bad. The good news is I was able to completely eliminate that extra Cisco switch. So now they just have the one US8120 watt and they've got their Edge Router X and the Edge Router X even has uh, two spare ports. So we should be good to go there. And then of course we've got the gorgeous uh, UAP AC Pro up top. Everything's working, speed tests are looking good, and now final thing I have to do is switch over the phones so that they start ringing in on my new Crosstalk extensions. All right, going out once again, is now the next day. I got basically everything installed at that client site uh, yesterday afternoon except we did not switch the phones over. We didn't switch the phones over because they had some weird forwarding thing going on. So basically I'm heading back there right now just to make sure that all of the users at that location are able to connect on the network fine and they can connect to the printer and all that sort of good stuff. And then I'm also going to be switching their phones over, which basically just involves call forwarding 
from their old provider to their new provider, which is Crosstalk uh, SIP and Crosstalk PBX, uh, we do call forwarding from their old provider until we can port the numbers out. And uh, that's a nice sort of stopgap measure where they can start using the new phone system and calls are gonna ring in, but they don't have to actually port their numbers for you know another week or two, however long the porting process takes. So should be an easy day. I'm expecting to be in and out of there in about an hour and uh, then we will call this second site done. Now this is the second of five sites that I'm doing that are all very similar. And the other, I did these two first because there was no change to their internet connection for these two. The next sites, however, all three of the next sites are DSL and they're already using VoIP phones over DSL. Someone sold them VoIP phones a long time ago and of course they've been having a terrible, uh, terrible experience with those VoIP phones. So the two sites that had good internet service already have now been switched over. They have the Edge Router X, which has the quality of service, the smart queuing, which I set up for both of these sites, and they are ready to go. Now I have to start coordinating, transitioning them off of DSL for the next three sites and sort of coordinate with the local providers. You know, in this case, it's gonna be Charter Spectrum for all of these uh, in order to meet them down there, swap out the network, make sure they're in bridge mode, all that sort of good stuff basically following all best practices for voice over IP because their last voice over IP experience was absolutely abysmal. Uh, you know, this company just sold them a bunch of voice over IP phones and didn't do any due diligence about their network or the type of internet or whatever. And you can't run five IP phones off of DSL. You're just gonna get cruddy, cruddy quality, which is exactly what happened. So we are fixing all of that we're doing it right. And uh, yeah, they will be very happy once this is all done. But the weather is so crazy out here on the Oregon coast. It was uh, nice and bright and sunny when I went into that office and then it started pouring rain and now two hours later, it's starting to get sunny again while it's still raining just a little bit. So that office is done and uh, they're very happy. I actually ended up being there for two hours. I only expected to be there for an hour, but one of the main contacts was there and I was able to train her fully on how to use the phones and the phone system and so that was a, a huge bonus that she was there because uh, now I don't have to come back later to do any training. Uh, these phone systems are so good. So this is a real estate office. These phones are so good for a real estate office. One of the things that we can do, I'm using the Crosstalk SIP phones or the, uh, essentially they're clearly IP phones branded for Crosstalk. One of the things they have is a follow me button on the phone that you just hit the follow me button and you can toggle follow me on and off. Not only that, you can hit settings and then set up your own settings. So like, so for these real estate agents where all of them want their phones to ring differently, they all have different mobile numbers. They're always changing their mobile numbers. There's a lot of turnover in terms of uh, staffing at these places. There's just one button on the phone where they can get everything done and they can control how the calls ring to their desk and they can control how the calls ring to their cell phone and it's very easy to do, that's the key, right? So I absolutely love uh, the Clearly IP phones and uh, yeah, this office is super happy with them. And that's about it. I, uh, I had one more job that I was gonna do tomorrow that I was gonna maybe append to the end of this video, but I think I will just skip that because I wanna get this video up and online. I've been filming it over the course of uh, almost a week now, a little bit over a week now. So I okay, hope you guys enjoy another look at On The Road with Crosstalk Solutions. If you do enjoy this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like that, uh, like this, uh, hit that subscribe button down below. All right, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.